yield myself as much time as I may consume. Gentlemen's recognized. Madam Speaker, I rise today to urge support for my amendment that will take an important step towards restoring congressional war powers. This amendment will bring our unauthorized military presence in Syria to a long overdue debate in Congress so we can ultimately vote to authorize or reject military action. Members on both sides of the aisle have long recognized the Constitution and the War Powers Act of 1973 grant Congress the exclusive power to send our servicemen and women into war. I represent parts of the Bronx in Westchester County, New York. And in my district, I am humbled to represent so many veterans who have sacrificed so much for our country. Hundreds of thousands of brave men and women have spent years away from their families, missing precious moments in their families' lives. Many have seen their brothers and sisters in arms be injured and killed in battle. Many have suffered life-changing injuries themselves. Others have made the ultimate sacrifice. On a daily basis, more than 17 veterans die by suicide every single day. A study from Brown University's Cost of War Project estimates that more than 7,000 service, service members have been killed in post 9-11 war operations, and the suicide epidemic has claimed more than 30,000 active duty service members and veterans. Given the unimaginable sacrifice of our troops, our troops make for our country, we owe them the respect of holding a debate and a vote on deploying them into harm's way. I hope that no one serving in this body would oppose honoring their service and their sacrifice by debating and voting on these life and death matters. We haven't shown that respect in my view. Washington is known for military contractors lobbying for endless wars and a bloated Pentagon budget while our investments in schools, health care and jobs at home are neglected. Our military footprint extends across dozens of countries, far from public scrutiny and accountability. In Congress, we find out about drone strikes after they occur in the news. My amendment, which I am honored to be joined by Representatives Khanna, DeFazio, Schakowsky, Tlaib, Levin, Cohen, and Richie Torres in offering, is a fundamental next step towards breaking that cycle. This is a question of war and peace that should be answered with a recorded vote in Congress. This amendment does not take a position on substantive Syrian policy questions. It merely requires this body to follow the Constitution and hold the debate and vote to authorize military action. I hope that my colleagues will agree that our troops and the American people deserve to see this body and hold that debate and then cast their votes. Under the last administration, President Trump made it clear that U.S. military troops in Syria were there to secure the oil, but an explicit authorization from Congress was never obtained for that purpose. I disagree with claims that the 2001 AUMF, which was about responding to the September 11th attacks, authorized our troops to engage in hostilities against these forces, which nobody argues had anything to do with those attacks or to guard oil fields. My colleagues who believe that the president does not need specific authorization to deploy U.S. military forces to seize Syria's oil, Syria's oil in an unconstitutional war should just admit that to their constituents. They don't care about the duty of Congress, the Constitution, or the War Powers Act. I agree with what President Biden said yesterday at the United Nations, where he called for a new era of relentless diplomacy and that U.S. military power must be our tool of last resort, not our first, and should not be used as an answer to every problem we see around the world. One step in the right direction would be to restore war powers, which is the solution put forth in this amendment. After U.S. troops clashed with armed Syrian villages last year, now senior Biden NSC advisor Brett McGurk wrote on Twitter last year that American soldiers with an ill-defined mission in Syria are forced to navigate roads controlled by Russia and Syrian regime forces. He said that this, too this is too much to ask of our brave warriors. I agree, and that is why I'm seeking a vote to show them the minimum respect of, our, of doing our constitutional duty and either authorizing a mission with clear goals in a timeline or bringing our troops home to their families. I honor and respect the incredible sacrifices made by our Kurdish allies. 
Nothing in this amendment supports abandoning the Kurdish people, nor do I personally support that. The current unauthorized U.S. military presence of indefinite duration is disrespectful to the Kurdish people as it does not provide them the clarity that they need to make their own sovereign decisions about how best to protect their people and advance that, their own interests. I want to have a transparent and vigorous debate in front of the American people in the role. I urge my colleagues to vote in support of my amendment and I yield back the balance of my time. Thank you.